Hi folks, Matt here from Media Arts. I'm going to show you how to get started with OBS. It's going to be very simple and hopefully this will just give you all the basic information that you need to capture something going on in Unreal, for example, and make sure that you've got good sound and good video. Of course, having good sound usually comes down to having a good microphone. Um, so that being said, I'll just proceed um, hoping that you have some sort of a, a microphone but of course, you don't necessarily need to talk if you're just capturing your, your game or your desktop audio. So bearing in mind that you don't necessarily need a mic and camera unless you're getting into kind of Twitch streaming or live YouTube streaming. I'll just show you the basics of capturing your actual um, desktop video and audio. So the first thing to do is to go on the OBS website. Just Google OBS or type in obsproject.com and download the version of OBX that you need, probably Windows or Linux if you're um, into game design stuff. And um, it just shows you the basic OBS screen, which I'll be going through in a moment. But in a nutshell, I'll just take this opportunity to explain the basic idea of, of OBS is that you have scenes. And a scene is just a recording setup. So you only really need one scene until you start to get to that stage where you've got different configurations, maybe different games that you're rec uh, recording. Um, you want to capture them in different ways or you want to have your camera positioned differently depending on what game you're playing. But really, just stick, for, just stick to one scene for now. And essentially, a scene is just like a preset. So you can add on audio or video sources into scenes and those sources are usually just a display with a microphone or with your um, desktop audio. So it doesn't have to be complicated, but it could be quite a complex scene if you were doing something really flashy and you wanted loads of graphics and kind of interstitials or lower thirds or various sources, video and audio, all combining together, even from VLC and stuff in the same scene, you could do that. But it can just be really simple. And um, when you install it, I recommend keeping it in the kind of basic mode. It does have a studio mode. So you press the studio mode button and it goes into like a, a kind of um, a TV stack type uh, dual monitor display. And that's, that's actually more for kind of doing more complex broadcasts. So just keep it in the, the main mode. Don't go into the studio mode. And you can see here, even in the kind of explanation image, you can see that you can, you can take different video sources maybe a HD video or images, and you can have them layered up in different ways if that's what you wanna do. But like I say, let's just keep it simple, shall we? Just to point out as well that um, there is, there's quite a lot of stuff on their website explaining how to do a lot of more complex stuff, but you don't need a lot of it. Um, if you go to the resources section, have a quick look through and you'll, you'll see actually that there's really useful stuff. Um, in the usually in the guides general section you can see oh here's how you can stream to youtube with obs studio there's great resources that are in there and um for example if you go into the studio guides there's some really useful information regarding um issues that can crop up with high frame rate recordings because i know that obviously um whether or not you're working with high frame rate um game footage you're going to want to capture that um, accordingly so um, worth bearing that in mind although I think you can just keep it quite straightforward for now so that being said I'm just going to minimize my browser and you'll actually see the fact that I'm recording myself showing you OBS so it's quite common that you get this kind of infinity screen this is because my screen is capturing itself and I'm showing what I'm capturing. So you get this infinity loop and you get used to that. It's a bit weird at first, but let me just show you the basic idea. If I deselect this um, basic capture eye, the actual desktop display will disappear. That's because it's, it's a source. You have to add audio and video sources. Otherwise your scene is gonna have nothing in it. There's gonna be no audio, no, no camera or no display capture. So to add that display capture, that's probably the first thing that you need to do. Just press the add button down here and go for display capture. And it should just be there, um, add existing display capture, or you can create a new one. You can add multiple sources, multiple display captures if you wanted to, but that's overkill, just, just go one for now. And when you press okay, you get the option to choose which monitor, you know, if you're running dual monitors, you should get the option to add that in. And 
it should just work to be honest when you when you press add it'll just add it straight in there and i've lost my camera because the new display capture has actually gone over my producer usb camera you can see here so the order of um your video determines whether or not you've got something overlapping something else so my webcam is now on top of the display captures and I've got two two of the same display captures added there so I'm just going to remove one of them so that's how you basically add the display capture and you can resize it as well it doesn't need to be full screen even if the um, the the source is HD or, or 4k um, you can you can reposition it and you can have many things going on if that's what you wanted to do but of course there's probably no need for that right now, is there? So we'll just keep it as it is and we'll um, go on to adding an audio source. Now, you're probably going to want to add in desktop audio. It's the output of your, your computer. So there should be a desktop audio in there. If not, just go create new and it'll just name itself audio output capture. And you can change the device to be um, your speakers. Make sure it's, um, this This can go wrong if, for example, you've got, I've got an external microphone connected and I don't necessarily want to set it to the output of my microphone or the output of my Oculus, for example. I just want to set it to um, the headphones, which is what I'm listening to the audio on the computer on because I'm connected via headphones. So it's whatever is your kind of default audio device. And for me right now, it's, it's headphones because I've got no speakers connected to this. So yeah, that was an audio output capture because it's the output side of the computer, not, not an input, which would be, for example, a microphone. So if you select an input, I've got the option to select uh, my, my microphone here because it's going into the computer. Um, and you might have various microphones, you might have an inbuilt microphone. Um, but yeah, just go ahead and create new and, and it should work. But if it doesn't, you can always go back into it later and, and see what's going on. So to do that, just select, for example, if I wanted to check my webcam source, maybe I'm, I've added a webcam on there, video capture device, but for some reason, my webcam hasn't actually come to life when I've added it. I can select it and press the little cog and I can go into my preferences and I can, I can see what's going on with that. Um, for example, I could change the type of source that it is even after I've added it already. So you don't need to worry too much. If you don't add the right source, you can always go back in and you can change it later. So right now I've got my display, which is obviously my computer and you can see OBS. I've got a webcam on top of that. And then I've got the audio. I've got the producer USB, which is an, an audio input capture and the audio output capture, which is actually um, anything that's playing through my, my computer's headphones, which would be the sound in Unreal. And that's it in a nutshell. You should have some audio level coming in on whatever source is playing. So there's my voice and I can make it quiet if I want to, or I can bring it back up and I can, um, I can again, I can change that audio source in real time if I wanted to, to be something else. So your audio from Unreal, if I just bring up Unreal for a second, and if I just go, um, what is it, option P to go into game mode, and then I'll escape. So I've actually got two, it's actually coming in twice. It's coming in on desktop audio, as well as audio output capture. And that's curious, because I don't have the desktop audio added in here but maybe it just added it by default because it always assumes that you want to capture your computer's audio. And that's like the number one thing that goes wrong if people don't know how to do that. So it, it possibly just adds it by default, but I've got it set up twice. So I could actually mute, you know, I could actually mute one of them. I don't want to have it duplicating on the recording side. So I'll just mute one of them and I'll just play it again. Alt P, option P. And I can see that's coming in pretty loud. And I'm not necessarily hearing the end recording when I'm doing all this, but I'm just eyeballing, just looking at the level that it's going in at. And usually you don't want to have that overriding if you do have any audio 
um, coming in on a mic, but you guys will just be fine to leave that up full if you're not recording in on a mic as well. So yeah, I should be able to um, go ahead and play around with this in Unreal and hopefully it will capture everything pretty well. Let's have a look at the shadows. And one thing that I've noticed before, especially when you're doing virtual reality stuff, is that um, it can fail to capture the detail in the shadows a lot of the time. So what you can do with the display capture, once you've got it selected, you can add on a filter. And um, let's see, you can add in a... Um, color correction, let me think how I did this before. You can add in a color correction filter and you can change the gamma because the gamma is what um, determines how you see the, the detail in, in, in an image. So if the detail is skewed towards the highlights and you're not seeing the detail in the shadows, you can play with the gamma and you, sh you would get better results from, from the dark bits of the screen. So I just wanted to point that out before I forget. But yeah, something else that I need to cover is the actual recording process. So you can see I am recording right now. And I know that because I can look down here, I've been recording for, for this amount of time. I've got CPU usage down here. I'm not live because I'm not pushing it to YouTube or anything, but that would actually start to count if I was. Um, but the main thing to look at down here is actually the, the settings because you need to be aware that you are recording in a certain way. You don't need to pay attention to too much of this, but um, straight away, if just go to the output and just check where the recording is going. Mine's going to a folder on my desktop called OBS and I can um, see all my OBS recordings and I can organize them by, by date modified and I can tell which one's which. And I've got the recording format set to MP4 and there's a big warning on this because Basically, you can choose MP4 or you can leave it on the default, which is MKV, Matroska Video, I think it is. And the reason that it defaults to Matroska is if, if there's some issue where it crashes, Matroska format will intermittently save the video so you don't lose the whole video if you crash out. Whereas with MP4 or MOV, the file won't be recovered at all. It'll lose the whole file if you have a power cut. Um, when the upside of using MP4 or MOV is that it's easier to work with, like it's easier to put in Premiere and to start editing with, whereas MKV, it's not quite as um, manageable as a codec because a lot of um, softwares don't know, they don't understand MKV codecs very well. So because I'm usually just doing recordings that are less than half an hour and my computer, <laughs> touch wood, never really crashes, I'm happy to take that risk and put it onto MP4 format and it's H.264 encoder. So um, it's a nice lean format and my CPU never, never goes high when I'm doing this, even though I tend to actually do this while Unreal is open or while Premiere is open. But just be aware of, of that. If it's too high, you, you, maybe you're asking too much of it and you need to you know, drop some of your um, resolution settings in in your software, you could try dropping the, the frame rate as well. Um, but yeah, that's the just the main thing to be aware of where it goes and what format it records to. So you've got video resolution as well. And um, you can actually set up hotkeys for OBS because you can switch. Um, if you're doing like live stuff, you can get really creative and you can set up different scenes and you can hotkey between them and you get um, the ability to change between like a full screen view of your face if you if that's what you're doing and the game view and maybe like a quad view if you have different people gaming or um you know you've got the ability you're receiving different live inputs but that's probably not going to be lightly um so that's just about it i don't want to overcomplicate things and I, I i think if you make the mistake of closing it before you press stop recording i think it does wrap up the file safely so don't don't worry if you do that but obviously always press stop recording um, to, to finish the recording. 
and that's that's just about it you'll have a mov that you'll be able to share with other people you can put it on i mean honestly if you want to make it easy for people just upload it to facebook or sorry to youtube yourself and share a link to other people so that you're not sharing you're not like we transferring and asking people to download large video files just put it on your own youtube share the link make it nice and easy for the recipient um, but that's just about it it really is about i suppose understanding the concept of the fact that these are uh, the scenes which are like presets that you add individual audio and video sources and more often than not it's just going to be a display capture with an audio output capture so the audio output capture should be what captures the um, audio from unreal and i'll leave it there any further questions and um, feel free to ask or there's a great community online as well um, you can just go on the obs forums or you can usually just google the question um, but the more you play with it the better you'll you'll kind of feel with with obs um but it's 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 great it's free it's very lean and um you know once you're recording you can forget about it then and you can come back to it when when you're done and just press stop hope you found that useful see you later